Do you have an old router or a router that doesn't have many features and you don't want to spend a crazy amount on a new one? Well, for the cost of a Raspberry Pi, you can have the ultimate custom home router with tons of features. And in today's video, I'll show you how you can do that with OpenWRT. Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Orist, and in today's episode, we're making a Raspberry Pi into the ultimate home router. I've covered OpenWRT in many ways, from flashing to VLANs and to VPN configurations. But even after upgrading to OpenWRT onto a stock router, we are still limited by the hardware. Well, with a Raspberry Pi, you get a more powerful ARM CPU, you get increased RAM to run more services, more storage to download additional software, and more USB interfaces for attaching Ethernet and Wi-Fi adapters, and adding external storage, and more. All of these features greatly increase the capabilities of your router. However, there are a couple drawbacks when comparing a Raspberry Pi to a stock router. One is that there's only one gigabit Ethernet port on a Raspberry Pi. And two is that the Wi-Fi chip on a Raspberry Pi is pretty small, which is not good for optimal Wi-Fi coverage. Luckily, these drawbacks can be overcome with additional hardware, such as USB interfaces mentioned earlier, or by adding a network switch or an access point to your Raspberry Pi. To create this OpenWRT Raspberry Pi router, I will be using the following. A Raspberry Pi Model 4B, a USB-C power adapter, a 32 gigabit micro SD card, a micro SD USB adapter, a USB Ethernet adapter, and of course, Cat5 Ethernet cabling. For software, we'll be using Belena Etcher, an OpenWRT image for Raspberry Pi 4B, an internet connection via an existing network, and an Ubuntu 20.04 virtual machine. Links to everything will be in the description below. Now that we've covered all that, let's get started in setting up our router. In this demonstration, we're gonna go over the following steps. First, flashing OpenWRT onto a micro SD card using Belena Etcher. Two, partitioning the OpenWRT image so we can use all the available storage on the micro SD card. Three, we'll be installing the USB ethernet driver in OpenWRT. Four is network configuration and five is Wi-Fi configuration. To get started, we're going to download the OpenWRT image for Raspberry Pi 4B from OpenWRT's repository. You can find this under OpenWRT's downloads page, as you can see here. We'll be downloading the ext factory image. I've already downloaded this, so we'll move on. Once downloaded, plug in your micro SD card to your computer using the USB adapter. Then we'll open Belena Etcher with elevated permissions and select our OpenWT image to flash, select our SD card for a device and click flash. Once this is complete, we're going to unplug our micro USB adapter and then plug it back in. This time, we'll be connecting the micro SD card to the Ubuntu virtual machine. First, boot up your VM. You can use VirtualBox to run your virtual machine, but I'll be using VMware Fusion. To learn how to create your own virtual machine, check out this video I made earlier. For the sake of time, I already had my VM booted and logged in. At this point, we're going to plug back in our micro USB adapter and connect it to the VM, as you just saw. This will then mount the file system onto the VM. Then we're going to open up the terminal. Here, we're going to run some terminal commands that let us modify the file system to use all of the available storage on the micro SD card. Now we're going to run the command 
LSBLK to see the plugged in SD card. Here we see the SD card and where the file systems are mounted. Next, we're going to unmount rootfs. This is important since the changes we are making affect this file system. To do this, we will run the command sudo umount media orist rootfs. With rootfs unmounted, we're going to run the command sudo fdisk forward slash dev forward slash sdb. Then we'll delete the second partition and follow the guided steps. First we'll press P, then we press D, and then we'll press 2. This lets us choose the partition we'd like to delete. After pressing enter, we've deleted the second partition. After, we press N for new and P for partition. Press 2 for a second partition. Then here we put the sector where the second partition starts. This will be the number where the first partition ends. In this case, it's 147456. Then we hit enter again, leaving this line blank, as the second partition will assume to use the last sector, or basically the rest of the space available on the microSD card. Then we press N for no, and lastly, we press W for write. Next, we run the command sudo e2fsck hyphen f, dev sdb2 for cleanup. Press Y to remove padding. And with that complete, we run the command resize2fs dev sdb2 to resize the file system. That completes the partition resizing. Now we can unmount the first partition using sudo umount dev sdb1 and remove the micro SD card from the computer. Then we insert this card into the Raspberry Pi, plug in the USB-C power adapter, plug in the Ethernet cable into the Raspberry Pi and into our computer, and then we turn on the Raspberry Pi. At this time, disconnect from your home network on your computer to avoid any IP and routing conflicts. Once OpenWRT is up and running, you'll see that your computer has been assigned an IP address from it. From here, we're going to log in to OpenWRT using SSH and prepare it to act as a client on your home network. This is so that it can get access to the internet to download additional packages needed for this configuration. We'll begin by logging into OpenWT with the command ssh root at 192.168.1.1. We're going to change the password here since none is configured. You can do this by using that passwd command. Once you've set up a password, we'll edit the DHCP file by using the command vi etc config DHCP. To begin editing, we'll press the I key. Here we add the line option ignore one under DHCP LAN. This will turn off DHCP server on the LAN interface. Then we'll delete the lines option limit and option start since we won't need those right now. We'll close out and save our changes by typing colon WQ and enter. We'll need to edit another file, the network file, using the command vietc config network. Then we change the line option IP ADDR to a static IP address of our choosing. I'll use 192.168.1.2. This is important because we want to know what IP we'll be connecting to. If you're using a different network range on your home network other than 192.168.1.04/24, then choose an appropriate static IP address. Then we add the lines option DNS and option gateway with the respective IPs to connect to the network.
In my case, I use 8.8.8.8 for the DNS and 192.168.1.1 for the gateway. We save these changes and then reboot using the reboot command. From here, we connect the Raspberry Pi to our existing home network by plugging in the Raspberry Pi into our home router using the same Ethernet cable that is plugged into our computer. At this point, you could reconnect to your home network. Once connected, we'll log into the OpenWRT router using Lucy. Depending on the version of Raspberry Pi you're using and the snapshot version of OpenWRT, Lucy may not be installed by default. If not, refer to my video where I flash OpenWRT onto a Netgear router and installed Lucy using the terminal. We can log in by visiting HTTPS 192.168.1.2 and typing in root for the user and the password we used earlier. After logging in, we'll navigate to System, then Software. We'll first click the Update List button to get all the available packages. After the update, we'll search for the package KMOD USB Net A6AX88179. This is the package that will enable our USB Ethernet adapter to work with OpenWRT. We click Install on the right, and click Install again on the pop-up and wait for it to complete. Once the install is complete, plug in the USB Ethernet adapter to the USB 3.0 port on the Raspberry Pi. After this, go to the Network Interface and then click Add New Interface. Name the interface WAN, choose DHCP client, and then choose ETH1 interface. This is the USB interface that we just added. Then click Create Interface. You can switch these interfaces around, such as the LAN interface to use the USB Ethernet adapter and the WAN interface to use the built-in Ethernet port, but we won't be covering that. You'll just have to be mindful if you make this change so that you don't lose access to OpenWRT. Then in the Firewall tab, change the zone settings to WAN. Click Save, and then Save and Apply. Then plug in the Ethernet cable to the USB Ethernet adapter and then plug in the Ethernet cable into your home modem or network to test first. You should see the lights light up on the USB Ethernet adapter, confirming an active connection. Then you should see the WAN interface in Lucy get an IP address. Now we are going to change the LAN settings to reflect the default network, or you create a network of your choosing. I'm going to make these changes using the terminal as when I tested this out using Lucy, the changes did not take effect, and I ended up stuck. We will log in once more into the Raspberry Pi with SSH and revert those changes that we made earlier by removing the lines we added to the DHCP and network files, and change the IP address back to default, and then save those settings in the file. Once complete, we can shut off the power to the Raspberry Pi, then plug in the LAN cable from the Raspberry Pi back into your computer, then turn the power back on. Once connected, you should be able to log back in to OpenWRT using HTTPS 192.168.1.1. Lastly, you can configure the Wi-Fi network. When doing this, I found it was best to make these changes in the configuration files, as I did with the LAN interface, as I ran into issues when making these changes in Lucy. Again, you can't expect the best Wi-Fi coverage, but it should be okay. Note that we will only be configuring the 5 GHz Wi-Fi, but you can do this with the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi if you'd like. First, we'll log back into OpenWRT via SSH in the terminal using SSH, root at 192.168.1.1. Then we'll type in the password to log in. Then we'll edit the wireless config file by using vi etc config wireless 
and we're going to delete the existing configuration and paste in the changes all at once. To briefly go through these changes, first we edit the Radio Zero device. Then we choose the Mac 80211 settings. Then we choose the Wi-Fi driver. Then we choose the country code, which here is US. Then we choose the channel width. Then we choose the hardware mode, which is 5 gigahertz in this case. Then we set the channel choice to be automatic. And then we set cell density to zero, which is the default. Then we create the wireless interface using the Radio Zero device. We set the network to LAN. We set the Wi-Fi security to PSK2. We set the Wi-Fi password to, in this case, strong Wi-Fi password. And then we set the Wi-Fi name to Raspberry Pi. And then we set the option mode to access point so that the wireless devices can connect to the Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi. After we're done, we exit out and save the changes. Then we reboot OpenWRT using the reboot command. Now that we're back up and running, let's do some quick tests. First, while plugged in, we'll do a speed test to see how fast the network is. We'll navigate to speedtest.net in our browser and start the test. Not a bad speed test. Next, we'll connect to the Raspberry Pi over the Wi-Fi network we just set up using our strong password and run a speed test once more. Not a bad speed test, though I am sitting right next to the Raspberry Pi on the Wi-Fi. These tests indicate that we're connected to the LAN network, receiving an IP address via DHCP, and that we're able to connect to the internet. And that about covers it for all my configuration with OpenWRT on this Raspberry Pi for your ultimate home router. I hope you had as much fun as I did setting up a Raspberry Pi as an OpenWRT router. There's so much that you can do with this setup and take a look at my other OpenWRT videos to discover the possibilities. To make this setup even better, we can add additional hardware such as USB interfaces, network switches, or access points, as I mentioned earlier. But we can also explore using different single board computers to run OpenWRT on, such as a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, a Banana Pi router, a ClearFog Pro board, a Seed Odyssey board, and many other boards on the market. Thanks for following me in my journey. I really appreciate it. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content and other content around IT technologies, networking, security, and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next video. What plans would you have for OpenWRT on a Raspberry Pi? How would you upgrade it and configure it to make it the ultimate home router? Go ahead and drop me a comment below and we could discuss it. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video.